hopefully we're recording here we go awesome well thanks everyone for joining and watching the video i've got adam on today who uh, has been selling on amazon for how long you've been selling for adam so must be near on nearly just probably about say about a year and a half year and a half so just a little bit less than me actually and i've seen his figures recently he's been absolutely crushing it so i thought i had to get him on here and ask him how he's done it and get some background and information like that so do you want to just tell us about your background and how you got into amazon yeah i mean to be honest with you uh my background's nothing to do with amazon whatsoever sales wise retail uh i'm actually a, a tradesman I've, i'm a qualified bricklayer um so i had done that since i was about 19 i'm 27 now i did that till i was about sort of well just recently until i become full-time doing amazon um but i did that for so many years but i actually managed to get an amazon like i say a year and a half ago but it was just doing it sort of part-time it was yeah. uh alongside the job so sort of like the working throughout the day and then doing all my amazon stuff on the night time but it's not worked out too bad to be fair so Oh, so that's pretty typical, isn't it? Not many people go straight into Amazon. I guess I'm one of the f few people that did that just because I got fed up with my job. But yeah, most people out there are going to do it alongside their job as a side hustle. Perfectly normal, isn't it? And then hopefully yeah, get to the point exactly. where they can quit their job. Well, that's it. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, for me, actually, it was I was pretty lucky that I'm, I have sort of took the leap and went full time because it was like last Christmas, I actually lost my job, really. But I was sort of on the sort of ball line, just quitting anyway, just because I wanted it to obviously concentrate Amazon way um, wise. But to be honest, if I never had um, left my job or anything like that, I probably would still be just doing this part time, to be honest with you, Amazon. So it's a good job it happened, really, because uh, yeah. like I say, I, I'm not going to look back anyway. That's for sure. Absolutely. I guess, uh, yeah, it was a. Uh... It seemed bad at the time, maybe losing your job, but do you feel like having more time to spend on Amazon has helped at all? 100%. Um, I think for me, it was when you, when you realise that you, everything all the time you invest in is for yourself and not basically for somebody else. That's what made us kind of give us the motivation to like, and it, it, to be honest, I, I, if I'm really honest, I don't see it as a job at the, at the, at the minute. Um, it's allowed me with much more like, freedom in terms of family life and personal life and things like that um if anything it going full-time on amazon amazon's probably made my life more busy <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah so yeah when you own your own business you uh, end up working i say twice as long but it's what you know then when you have a job it's for yourself though but um but yeah the main yeah. thing i think is uh well, obviously when you're working a job you work like say one hour you get your whatever your set pay is like say 12 pound an hour whatever with Amazon, you know, that one hour of effort can be multiples of whatever you're earning. And the more you put in, the more the multiples can go up. Awesome. It's kind of insane. Uh, honestly, so, yeah. it's, and it's, I think for me, it's been doing small increments every day. Um, I'm quite good with my time usually. And if, for instance, I do quite a lot of my work on the nighttime, um, yeah. which is, I know probably a bit opposite of what other people do if they were doing sort of Amazon full time. I don't know what sort of their hours are like but for me actually i'm actually more productive at night time um so even after this call i'll be doing more more work just purely because that's just when i'm most productive um but Absolutely. there's no set in stone like sometimes i'm working in the morning but i think just being like smart with your time is probably the best thing to do um Absolutely. that's what's worked out better for me and to be honest i'm probably not doing the sort of eight hours a day um I'm probably doing much less than that, but I'm just trying to be a bit more smart with my time, which yeah. is the most important thing. Well, that's the one thing you get is freedom, and it's whether it's freedom to work as much or as little as you want, or whatever time yeah. of the day you want to work is that's a great thing about 100%, being a business, 100%. It? especially a business like this where you can just work when you want. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what it's been like for me. Some days I'm actually really working really hard, and especially I remember Q4. Um, yeah like that was really busy just because obviously I was still working at the time um so I was having no choice but to be prepping on the night time yeah. but I was trying to do my prep in the morning when I'm full time now so it's you know it's it's one of them like you could as you say the more you more the more you put into it the more you're going to get out of it it's as simple as that really absolutely yeah so how did you actually like find out about Amazon how did you actually get into it um shout out to uh, Nikos actually because it was his YouTube videos I'm sure um we'll tag him uh basically 
it was his YouTube videos that probably got me started. And I can't remember in particular what it was. I don't know if it was RA videos where he was sort of, obviously he's got his body cam on, or it was his um, garage videos, whether he was packing or just like discussing the topic things are. But stumbling upon that, I think I can't, it must, because I was quite like on YouTube anyway. And then that's how I found his videos. And I think it just went from there. Um, then I watched more YouTube videos. And then obviously I did it, sort of started myself and it, then I obviously ended up joining this discord group which is obviously what i would definitely recommend to anybody if we're starting out just to join a discord group uh purely for one for learning and yes the leads especially but yeah, it's more for the learning um and that's what i did i ended up joining his group and then obviously it's just took off from there really awesome were you skeptical at all when you saw this like oh you can make, just walk into tesco's and walk out with a hundred pound or you know <laughs> it's one of them where I'm, i was definitely i was definitely skeptical um but to be honest with you i'm gonna say this anybody it, the opportunities there and i just took it and i'm still doing it now i'm you know it's just it's as simple as that the opportunities there so just take it while it's there yeah. and say so, you know it's it, to me as as you've mentioned before with amazon i can't see i can't see like it's gonna just there's no glass ceiling is there really no so, i don't think so no and say past few days what you've made sort of 300 pound profit you know that kind of figures today sort of 200 pounds so i don't know i've seen so, you, you your your profits just skyrocket could you imagine making 300 pound a day you know no, it's just uh not no, I don't. Um, <laughs> and when you start thinking your... oh, if i could do that every day for a year it's like oh how much yeah. is that that's uh well, it's a lot it's... of money <laughs> and what people a lot of people actually forget about is uh it's compound interest as well yeah i don't know how everybody's got different strategies but it, for me the more um you can put back in yeah. the more you're going to get out of it so it is it just it kind of builds up over time so you know you don't have to start with a lot it just depends on everybody's circumstances um luckily for me I had some back in through just purely because through work and things like savings and things like that and investing in stocks and whatnot. Um, but you don't need a lot. Like I say, it's just one of them where you, you'll see it over time um, if you're just consistent as well. Yeah, it spirals day. and it's kind of an exponential growth, isn't it? I think it starts off slow, but before you know it, you're doing 300 pound days and yeah, you're crazy. thinking, well, how can I get that to six or nine or a thousand a day? You know, yeah, <laughs> it, it, exactly. Like it, it, it gets to the point where it's, it is, it's mad. It's just, it's just like crazy numbers, isn't it? Like it, it is just numbers, yeah. but like when you actually think about it, you're like, well, I know because I'm putting in the hard work. So, you know, it's, you won't be doing it unless you put like the hard work, do you know what I mean? So absolutely so yeah i just did the calculations so uh, obviously this is all pre-tax and stuff but 300 a day obviously if you can do that consistently yeah you know, it's definitely. just it's 110,000 a year and it doesn't seem so crazy to go well could i go from three to six just double it and then you're on 220 a year i'm like, saying like compound interest like <laughs> you just it's like you know you might start 50 pound a day profit yeah you know whatever all been there. absolutely it just grows and grows you know and to the point where i mean only in q1 as well so like yeah everyone's been, yeah everyone's you know, been complaining how hard it is you know <laughs> I, know, I know but it's, but it's the thing is though like there's no excuse like there's no reason why like if you're doing it now like what's it going to be like when like, the sort of better months come of the year um yeah. that's the way i see it i think we we're all taken by surprise uh by q4 i certainly was the demand although it's yeah. so obvious is just so astonishingly great that you just underestimate it yeah, and, um... <laughs> I, I just think it's important to be thinking about it because you always got to be so like many months ahead, like because you've literally got to be thinking all the time, like sales cycles. What's going to sell a Q4? You're building up your yeah. profits and your money now to be able to buy more for when Q4 comes. And I've just yeah. I learned so much in terms of like you need to send your stock in earlier. You need to go deeper on certain things, looking at sales cycles, reading keeper charts, things like that. And I've only really done two Q4s. One was the uh obviously the first yeah because i started like september 2022 um okay. which wasn't really a proper q4 because obviously i was just started didn't really know what i was doing but last year's q4 yeah. was insane so i can only want to imagine what's gonna be like this year's as well absolutely yeah i mean i found myself even in january thinking oh i could buy that and hold it till christmas you know that's a good q4 item <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, <100%. yeah. laughs> lego lego there's, there's so many different strategies there's so there many are. different strategies you can go down absolutely so how much do you start with then um don't mind um, asking roughly good question you know. I, I would probably say realistic in terms of 
it's it's a hard question really isn't it because it's like when did you invest the money but r- realistically it would yeah. have been a couple of thousand pounds sure. for f- like sort of the first couple of weeks and then yeah. over time i was just gradually putting more and more in i'm going to yeah. say more was more like i had a wage coming in from a normal job but any sort of any sort of spare money was go just going in amazon buying stock yeah so you don't time. have to but put all in yeah. one go yeah you can do yeah, it yeah, I, I wouldn't i wouldn't say it's somebody you would need like say like 10 to 20 to fifty thousand yeah. pound to put it all in straight away it's really not like that you've just got to put in a small amount and then just see it grow over time you're going to be learning so you're going to be learning about stock and things like that and different sales cycles and different um categories and things like that Absolutely. so i wouldn't have said i started with a lot that's for sure cool it's good though i think a lot of people could try and get together one or two thousand pounds and like I say once yeah. you realize the opportunity you'll be trying to get as much money in as possible i mean capital generally yeah. is the biggest thing that holds people back at amazon yeah it's yeah. cash yeah you know and that's why you use the amex credit cards to try and stretch that out a bit more yeah and there's loans out there not suggesting anyone does that but those are options no. available once you're experienced yeah 100 um, percent. i wouldn't do that straight away unless you know what you're doing yeah, and that's through absolutely. discord groups learning but the big thing i would say is you will need a certain amount um just purely because i think there's some there's certain softwares i think that's essential to start sure which um, ones do you think you, then you know you've got your reprices that's just you need that I'd, i know there's like a big topic like saying people you don't need it and things like that to start you can go manual but like it's you've got to think you've got to think well, for me you've got to think six months ahead you've got to think two years ahead you're going to need a repricer so you're going to need that from the start you're going to need you obviously i would say you need a discord group and there's many out there um you can join yeah um i would also say you need to be tracking your profits so you've got sell a toolkit um what's the one sell a board uh, there's many out there so there's Skill three up to now yeah. there's three up to now and already you, you, you know you've got their monthly memberships absolutely but reprices well, they pay for themselves so what about keeper you're a big fan of keeper keeper yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. It, do you know what it is learn from my mistakes i didn't get keeper for ages <laughs> big mistake yeah for, that's a... for one for one main reason if it's not for sourcing which i think is vital you need keeper for sourcing it's actually for um for uh what they called uh like price drops yeah. uh i actually was clever in a way and I actually every time i got a good deal from amazon put it in straight away the price drops so next time when amazon matches somebody else retails price drop the price drops you're in there and it's probably maybe not drops that's in discord groups either it's your yeah, own that's, that's definitely one i've slept on yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. i noticed that straight away um and from then i've just had drops where i'm like waiting for pings and discord groups they're not there so that there's plenty of um there's plenty of stock out there for people to buy but yeah keeper, one thing yeah, uh, definitely get keeper 100 from the start yeah. essentially that's almost like a replenishable that's one thing i've noticed a lot of people a lot of groups don't talk about is replans much it's yeah. all about just the latest shiny lead no. but not talking definitely about not. what about the lead that was six months ago that everyone's forgotten about you know um so yeah that's a good that's it but that's what i've slept on there's so many nuances and things that to do that some yeah. you're going to miss some things replenishable um, so yeah you've got your keeper price drops you've got old stock that obviously sold out um and then you can go online straight away and if that website's um sold out you can just simple google search nothing too strenuous uh you can see if that stocks um somewhere else in another retailer and that might open a lead because you can then go on that retailer and look at the same brand and then source them products or you can just source products that's on that website anyway so you, you're always thinking like you're always finding these new websites and things like that you can find with certain brands and stuff and i would also say replenishables in terms of sales cycles if you know a certain sales cycle you know when it's going to be out of stock so you know when you need to get in there you know when it's going to sell out but you also then know when to re- like to buy it as well so yeah replans i would definitely say if people stuck for leads because there is certain times of the year where discord groups might not be able to like supply continuous leads that's when you need to be finding your own so i would definitely say replens 100 so percent what is your favorite kind of sourcing method if you had to kind of name one because uh, um, i know people will ask like that's what i think i get asked a lot is how do you source what any tips um, out there or for sourcing um it's difficult because there's so many different ways out there like i actually like ra you know and people are like well yeah like you've got to pack in stuff like that and i get that like um for me 
I like Ari because I actually find my own stuff as well. Yeah. And then I just see it. So when next time I'm out in the shops, I know I know it's going to be there continuously throughout the year. So you've got Ari. Um, I like, um, uh, so a lot of people do, probably a bit controversial, but storefront stalking, which you can do. Yeah. Um, that's a good that's a good way to start as well. And it's not always the case of just like, just to see like, what, what like, whatever start it is it's just to see what people sell and so it might give you ideas and things like that absolutely um for me i do private labels so that's another source and uh, you know it's different websites where you can source your own products and things like that um but in terms of like oa and ra and things like that um i'll probably say discord groups really mainly and then like as we just mentioned before replans and stuff so a certain deal that was like that's when out of stock, but it got dropped six months ago. Just go back through old leads and have a look. And people's probably too busy like focusing on newer ones. But like if you just go back, you'll probably find loads. Yeah, definitely a mistake I made actually. I think something I kind of realized recently was the replans thing. You know, um, so yeah, if you ever struggling, go back and look at replans. So yeah. you, you started off with what OARA and then transitioned into private label. Yeah, hundred percent. So I started pretty much doing RA and OA. Um, then it got to the point where i couldn't really keep up anymore so that's when i integrated a prep center um so that kind of covered my oa side not unless it was certain specific items i would pack myself um so like you say i'm always doing aura anyway because i'm actually always out and about if i'm doing something personally anyway so I'm, it's not really always the oh i'm setting out to do aura it's like i'm out anyway so i might as well just be looking inside the shops um never done wholesale okay. so i can't recommend anything to do with that um then it was cousin Nigos as well who actually uh set up a little group for private label to help every, a few people out because i've seen he was doing it and i've obviously found it extremely difficult i didn't really know where i was going with it um but just learned from him personally but also the group and then also uh doing a course as well um and obviously i was a bit hesitant with that and just by doing like a little bit of learning each day i just kind of learned as i went and i've made loads of mistakes but you know every day I like it's just a learning day isn't it so absolutely so what's the biggest mistake uh, you made in private label then um two things uh the biggest mistake i made was so i would say get your trademark first um then um if you find a product only list it under your brand don't okay. list it under generic because it's an absolute yeah. nightmare to get it changed and okay. i've noticed and one of two of my products that sell really well they're both generic um but they actually did get one of them did get changed but then amazon changed it back so it's an absolute nightmare obviously i've, I've got other uh, products that are under my own brand and uh, products that i've ordered but yeah from the start get your trademark straight away so any product you're listening on Amazon, put it straight on your brand. Don't put it under generic because it's an absolute nightmare to get it changed. And people can jump on your listings because I had like a Chinese seller jump on my listing. Yeah. Um, probably didn't know, you know, I'm not like they, because obviously they're probably sourcing from the same place. So they just jumped on my listing and nicked like a few sales and stuff. Yeah. So basically what I did was I just bought their stock out. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> bought, bought the stock out. I had to in the end because they were it's getting a good strategy. Killed yeah yeah it was mental because like amazon like they usually reward you depending on stock like i'd like obviously my own stock in and they only had like say like five or six but they were getting the sales and it was knocking me because they were like basically mm -hmm. they were because they were getting the sales the sales rank was jumping down because they weren't selling so i okay. ended up having to buy their stock out so then i've got it now and then either send it back with um sort of like uh like a bad review but not a review yeah. to not get listing, but a review to not yeah. the seller, like the seller, um, or just send it in as your own. Like so, it's the, it's the same item. Okay. Um, yeah. But it would it would it would only work if you do buy them out, so then you can get the, the buy box back. But that's another mistake I would say to people is I always say you get your product straight away, test it out first before you do all the design. But actually, in the same time, you should do the design because you've already got under your own brand name so nobody can copy you then because okay. it's trademarked yeah and they say i learned the hard way so and i'm still so, dealing with that yeah. obstacle now 
So when you say design, do you mean like the, the pictures and stuff like that for listing? Even just putting your name on the product. Okay. Okay. I so see. Yeah. Cool. It's trademarked. You know, you yeah. can't. Nobody can copy it. If somebody, if somebody comes on your list and tries to sell your product, you can just go go for Amazon and just IP them straight away. And because yours was generic, you could didn't have that protection. Is that no, what? Hundred percent. Yeah. I didn't have that protection. Okay. So there's so a very. Good I was there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I was lucky because I actually got good sales before somebody jumped on, and I was wondering like it dropped, and I was like, "Why well, am I not selling?" And I realized somebody was on the, the listing, and that's yeah. when I realized. So I tried to go through the IP way, but Amazon were a bit funny with it because they were like, "Well, we can't change it because it's generic, and we can't really do anything because you haven't got a trademark." So even when I put uh, my name, my brand name in the the listing, it still didn't, didn't really do anything. Okay. Um, but I'm I'm in the process of changing it. I think I will get there eventually, but that would be the big thing for somebody maybe just to even put your like even if it's in small just put your name on your products and then nobody can copy you but then you wouldn't have that issue anyway because you, you you've already got your trademark so you know you should be okay yeah it's very interesting so a very good lesson there i suppose for the private label yeah. so, and, so and it's just dealing with supplies as well like the second thing for me um is like you need to speak to a supplier with good english because a lot of them the, the um the companies they work for might be really good so they have good reviews in alibaba but them as a person aren't and they might be inexperienced so they don't really know how to ship properly and it's an absolute nightmare okay. um so there's there's all there's loads of different things you learn 100 <laughs> percent. So have you had like a bad shipment then or is that is that something you've experienced uh, no it was because another mistake i made is basically uh you got ddp which you can go through when you're buying your um your products so you're buying the unit as a unit price but you've also got to pay for the shipping as well and okay. if you get ddp i won't go in with a massive amount of debt but basically it just means that they can send it straight from the warehouse to amazon yeah which means you don't need to pay for any more shipping because you've paid but when you then go to create your um, shipment plan on Amazon, you need to obviously choose a shipping carrier and you need to communicate with the supply and ask which one they want it. You choose an IBAX and usually they use D, um, DVD. So technically, with UPS being Amazon's shipping partner, if you like send in like, say, like Hazmat or like whatever, and you, you like, you when you click the button, it's like you don't use UPS, but you click the arrow button and you see all the different options. So you do, yeah. you're obviously paying for your shipping yourself um so realistically supplies what do you click dvd so you click obviously that then you get your your box labels which you send to them and they'll stick on and send it straight away but i by accident once click like ups so i like double charge myself oh, okay yeah. so you can imagine how much i paid for like a shipment and once i was lucky because it was a smaller item but if i'd like say they made the mistake on my biggest item and by accident just like paid for ups labels i've already paid for shipping so I don't, yeah. you don't need to double pay. You don't need to double charge yourself. So that's another mistake I made. Then when, but then you, I was too late because you think you get twenty four hours before you can cancel. Yeah, and I was over. Okay. So yeah, it's another headache. That yeah, but it's another, it's just another loophole you get. You get past really. That's all. Absolutely, is. you're not going to be perfect in this business. You're going to, especially when you're dealing with people in China. That's a whole other complexity. So I don't do private label, but obviously this is a. You've got a lot of experience now, and knowledge that's very valuable, and you, yeah. you learn more from your mistakes than you do. Yeah, you know, you're success you've, you've uh, got to make them you've got to, i hate yeah. to say it when you crash. you've got to make them because if you don't yeah. make them then you're like sort of because you've just got to go for it you yeah know what I mean? you've got to go for it because you're going to make loads of mistakes it's what you just get over them and like you realize for next time and things like that yeah so you do, too costly yeah it's all going to cost a bit of money so would you recommend private label for a new seller at all um yes yes and no uh I actually know a lot of people that just did private label at first, but the problem with that is like you don't really know what sells on Amazon. And I know people will be like, oh, well, you've got like Source and you've got your Jungle Scout and Helium 10, but you still yeah. are inexperienced and you're not. I would always say for people just to start off with not doing private label straight away, but maybe doing it on the side. And you don't need to be like, oh, like I need to go into private label straight away and just focus on it. But people forget it's a slow burner. Yeah. So I would just say do it alongside your RA and OA or wholesale or whatever it is that people do or 8A, things like that. I would just I say do I'd... it alongside and realistically, that's where I'll be doing private label eventually, just private label. But I wouldn't say you need to jump in it but straight away. Yeah, Definitely not. 
that's what I tend to think. You know, there's a lot of learning on Amazon. It's like with people who want to jump straight into wholesale. I'm like, you don't even know anything about Amazon. You want to spend five or ten grand on the purchase order. Yeah. I'm like, so imagine, yeah, yeah, crazy. <laughs> and you don't know anything about Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you like imagine yeah. if you haven't done Amazon before and you're like, your first order from China is like, say, like a thousand yeah. units and you're spending like six hundred quid. It's a lot of money. People would be like, whoa, well, how long is that going to take? You can't sell it or it doesn't sell or whatever yeah, multiple exactly. different things you can't get the you know documentation for like safety and stuff yeah, so exactly. all sorts I, of kind of yeah you know. my first product was like that i didn't i either clicked the wrong button on my listing so i put batteries or it was just purely because amazon were being funny and they wanted like documentation but i had luckily enough had a good supplier who basically just sent me the right stuff okay, it was yeah. basically it was like a dangerous good item and they just sent me like documentation to say like it was fine but okay. without a good supplier i wouldn't have got that and then i would have spent all that money um probably being on the way to amazon and would have never been able to sell it so you've just got yeah. to be careful make sure you always have a good supplier with a good documentation yeah absolutely yeah so yeah definitely uh, i think yeah oa and ra are the best ones to start with and then transition 100%. so uh, and a lot of people be like oh we'll just do like one like strategy but the thing is like you might not enjoy it so you won't stick at it or it might not work at a certain time of the year yeah. or like it might just be slow so like why not try a bit of everything and see what you like and then maybe yeah you can f just focus on one but but the thing is though like what happened, if that doesn't work like what are you can do then like you know you you need to try different different strategies that's what i would i would recommend absolutely i always say to people the first year is for learning sec learning second year is for earning so yeah learn in your first year do everything and you know ra looks like a great strategy but there's not always the sales on are there so yeah well, sometimes it's exactly it's, yeah, like, <laughs> you know other days it's great <laughs> yeah exactly so, people be like oh just do a to a but what happens if there's no deals <laughs> yeah the past three months have been dead absolutely so, dead a to a pretty much whereas what you, know, you do wholesale and somebody yeah. jumps on your listing absolutely yeah so you can't just focus on one really as long yeah. as if you do OA, OA and you're not really because i'm not the best sorcerer either and like you know whatever like i I'd, i think i've probably got a few skews that are like age and that are just me as the seller but i can't think of a list and where there's not something else on so like once somebody bricks it so you can't just do one strategy i would say yeah absolutely i think you need to always keep evolving as well you know like i imagined i'd be able to do amazon to amazon just forever and then you know it turns out it's not a strategy that can scale or even is necessarily going to last um you know yeah. so yeah, exactly like you, you, the good thing with fade away obviously is you do get your your holding period so when you're buying it you probably might not sell it all a couple of months because obviously until the price drops or whatever or people sell out but obviously you can get into a cycle where like if eight ways going good and there's loads of leads you can get into that cycle where like you're buying something but you obviously don't see the results for three months but while that's that asin's weight and you're selling stuff now that you bought three months ago so you you can't see a good cycle with it but it, it just depends on if the leads are there but i wouldn't say just go for just just do eight away or whatever yeah yeah i might have said that to people six months ago you could get away with doing that you know but now seeing the past three months or so you know just no good uh no. i'm sure it might come back again who knows and you could start making like an easy like when i first started you could make two grand a month no problem yeah. doing amazon to amazon like without any issue well. um or it's, it's now it's you bit, definitely can't yeah exactly you, you can't <laughs> you can't just rely on it and like you say whatever it is you do you need a bit of luck like i mean you might find winning products away or whatever or even private label but like i can't just imagine just for me at this moment in time just doing one because if it's going well doing a bit of everything I, I i don't really see the problem but i know some of you'll probably say oh no you've got to just focus on like one strategy but there's arguments for everything isn't there i suppose but um, but I think you're taking a very natural progression that most people end up doing, and that's starting with the OARA and then slowly transitioning either into wholesale or private label. That yeah. seems to be pretty much what most people do, uh, okay. because I think uh, doing ONRA full time just over a long period maybe is not quite as sustainable as other business models. No. So, no, no. Um, I would only say it's sustainable way if you get a prep center. I couldn't yeah. imagine packing the stuff that I order all the time. Can you imagine like the big bulky items and things like that we order? <laughs> absolutely, yeah. So I mean, I've seen nightmare. People do do it, but I mean, I still get stuff delivered here, and I, you know, I still haven't learned my lesson properly. But yes, anything big and bulky, I send to a prep center. Um, the way I look at it is right. Would you be happy to say you found like a really good RA deal? Would you be happy to continuously pack that every day, all day for weeks? Yeah. 
if it's such a good deal. I know people are like, well, yeah, because you're making money, but like you do that for a bit and then like you realize that like, you can't just it's really you mundane. enjoy you life, haven't you? A little bit. You can't yeah, just you can't keep can't focusing on money, yeah, man. Like, yeah. You can't be doing it. Like, why? Destroy. I know people would be like, oh, save money, pack, you know, like don't yeah. send it to a prep center. But like, honestly, I would say just prep center from the start because you'd literally, yeah, then you, you've got time to source and things like that. Do you know what I mean? You find your next deal, aren't you? So. Yeah, I think that's the mistake I made was uh, or I went took too long to go to a prep center, then stopped using it because I was like had a few bad months and then I wanted to save the money. But now I'm regretting it again. So I think it's good for people to learn how to do a, a box or two, maybe do your own prepping for a month or two and then just literally offload that work because it's, it's you can spend that time sourcing or doing yeah. something more profitable. And to be honest, for me, having got into Amazon, I now see so much opportunity in every avenue um with amazon or whatever social or whatever um i just don't want to spend my time packing anymore <laughs> uh, no, like, just... you know i know you've got to because you get like if you do if you're in like an ra group and you you, you know yeah. you find like good deals or whatever like and there's good leads you've kind of got to but you've got to think like six years time what like you really want to be still doing like ra packing i mean i might be wrong i don't know I yeah know. i mean some people might enjoy that um yeah they might they be able to get their girlfriend or wife to do it or i get my cleaner yeah. to do it for me so 12 pounds say, hour, like uh, she's spread it out like work. you know you, you don't have to send everything to the prep center you can do your bit your own but maybe just help yourself out a bit just send a little bit there the prep center i mean depending on your margins and depending on um your cash uh it's i know when people be like if your expenses come out once like a month and whatever like your prep center might send you like an invoice i know it can seem like a lot but the thing is you've got to think like it's worth doing because they're probably they're essentially making your money because while they're packing your like sauce and things like that so it depends because i know you can have bad months and things like that but that's that's yeah. just the way it is isn't it so absolutely yeah no one does this perfect by the way guys no. uh, you know we all make mistakes i've made plenty of mistakes <laughs> you know oh, plenty right. of mistakes <laughs> yeah, before i'm there like you could write a bible couldn't you with, like, yeah, the amount of mistakes you've made but that's how you learn guys so um so what do you recommend we kind of touched on already but like for someone who's brand new to amazon or someone who's been selling for six months like in terms of maybe uh scaling or you know any kind um, of tips for someone who's kind of new to amazon yeah, like for me, I think it's like, do you know what it is? I know it sounds stupid, but it's it literally is like small increments every day, like in just consistency. I don't think you've got to get there straight away. You like, I mean, whatever numbers you hit, you're always going to want more numbers. But like, I would definitely just say, like, someone just don't like, if you don't, I know it's hard because you see people like posting numbers and things like that, but I think you've just got to, doing a little bit every day helps. Do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't say you've got to like be making like I'm just setting like certain goals. I would probably say as well, sure. set your goals, and then you know what you're aiming for. You probably might not get to the goals, but at least you're going to be quicker than like not sending them, uh, setting them, so to speak. Cool. So, what kind of goals do you set for yourself? Like profit goals, spending goals, or what, what kind of goals? Uh, like now, I would say I work on like a forty percent sort of ROI. I know people do profit margin things like that, and you're probably more profit you're probably your, your language will change when you do private label in terms of margins and roi you sort of go towards the margin side when you do private label yeah um but i would say like for roa i would say more roi just purely because of like certain deals i need to go for because just in case they get bricked so okay. for me 40 percent roi and i would say probably a minimum like a thousand pound in sales a day so for this month i'm trying to go for 40k a month and nice. if you work that out for 40 percent roi you know so yeah absolutely so awesome That's I, a I was, good... and then next month the month after that maybe 50k in sales we'll see awesome but then maybe do it weekly as well and then even daily cool. like daily i need to be doing like well daily I need to be doing like a thousand pound of sales a day and then that comes to your spending goals as well so so how do you find uh time to purchase all this stuff do you find it quite a chore i guess or is it like, easy is that something yeah. if it's a replens or not like say, <laughs> yeah. using it if if it's a replens and you're using a prep center, it's not too bad. But I've got like at the minute probably more leads than I need. So I, yeah, I'd probably say it is a bit of a chore because if you don't automate some of it, then yeah, it is. It is a bit manual. 
Mm. But I, I, you know, it depends. You know, it just comes with time. Like you'll find certain leads that maybe like there's only a few sellers on the list and things like that. So it might be like slow sellers, but at least they're like consistent. Okay. Cool. Interesting. Did you ever think about splitting up your uh, OARA business and your private label business? Is that something you considered? So you've, you've done it all on the same account, haven't you? Yeah, I've done it all on the same account, but I wouldn't. I mean, I think I, I know of people that do that do have separate accounts. I don't know how it works. I don't know if it's like bad or not. Like, but I do know people that's got different accounts, but like different um, different avenues that they're going down. So obviously they got the RA and OA and private label. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to do that. Like, I haven't, I've never really looked too much into it. Um, so yeah, maybe Amazon... I probably won't probably won't need you because eventually I'll probably maybe like RA and OA will be phased out at the point where there won't be that many SKUs. So I'll probably still have them, but there's more. It'll be more private label side. So okay yeah amazon do not like multiple accounts unless you've got a very good reason so yeah if you've got like a yeah. different business maybe that's a good uh, okay reason but yeah, yeah generally you wouldn't but... do it without your background like checks and things like that 100%. okay you've got to do your background i wouldn't be diving in just because somebody on like instagram says to do it don't just do it you've got to like yeah to, like, do you know what i mean like you've got to you've got to think for yourself a little bit yeah absolutely so you uh, mentioned you what learned most of this stuff from sort of youtube to keep, to begin with and then you went into discord is that a good yeah, place like, to think people to look is anybody YouTube new or... starting yeah definitely youtube anybody new starting discord groups like i say as well uh asking questions just pe like just pestering somebody that that's like a bit further ahead of you like you always want somebody ahead of you and i like, just like pester them with questions like even if it, there's no such thing as a stupid question just asking questions and they'll and like just just maybe like help them out a little bit like things like that and then they'll help you out but like definitely just learn from something that's a little bit ahead of you putting putting questions in group and in group and the chats and discord groups watching videos on youtube like reading blogs and things like that there's loads there's loads of things out there you can watch people Absolutely. spend hours on tiktok and things like that don't they so i'm i've never been on tiktok so maybe there's stuff on there as well i don't know but might yeah. all be crap i'm not sure but <laughs> yeah i'm not a tiktok guy really but yeah i'm over youtube, youtube yeah like yeah. follow somebody on youtube that's like the numbers don't have to be real but just like see what they're doing every day things like that like people are putting yeah. blogs and things like that like you've got your own youtube channel like somebody like just watch your videos do you know what i mean like you you've got the numbers to back it up but even if you didn't have the numbers to back it up you can see the content's good so you're probably like thinking looking like, well I, like i'll take that okay i don't think he's doing that very good but i'll i'll learn that you know just youtube i would probably say probably is the best way to go that's cool yeah it's good uh good advice and yeah i think uh, i agree ask people questions just uh think about your questions don't go and say like oh can you give me a lead or whatever think yeah, about like, that's not what i meant like yeah yeah when I said this, people, yeah, like, yeah i know i know yeah i'm just giving it for the uh for the viewers yeah because yeah. i sometimes get asked like oh can you give me a lead or what what category do you sell in or you know amazon's quite a very secretive community i found actually it was very difficult to ask i was looking yeah. at people who were doing 10 20k a month and i was asking questions and to be honest i was getting kind of stonewalled um so that's why i'm trying to open it up a little bit and you know because everyone's so yeah, scared like, about sharing the knowledge i'm like there's, there's nah. plenty of room for everyone <laughs> God, nah, you've got to drop, I'm not drop even, your ego i'm not drop even ego, scratching man. the surface on like what's what's possible on amazon there's enough money for everyone nah. um I'm, I'm yeah. totally on, on but inside that drop your ego like just help people out yeah, oh, actually, yeah, honestly yeah. if you help people out they'll help you yeah get into a small discord that. group yeah get so, a small discord group. a couple of mates or something like that do out with that at fba that's what we do we you know with this four or five of us in one group and we just chat don't we and help each other out um I want everybody to do well like just like yeah like I, yeah you want yourself to do well but just help other people out and you know you, it's just brilliant yeah, isn't it so then you just, just help each other out yeah so yeah you know, i'm trying to think of the, is the better business that i know of where you can literally go from with very little money to like no, a six figure can't. business <laughs> like, no, like, just it's crazy. like i was doing like a six figure thing like in terms of sales and revenue not profit sure, yeah yeah um, absolutely yeah when not i was yet. uh when i was still working like just the opportunities there, like take like it's literally would have been 2024 now like there's not there's there might be something better that comes along i don't know but at the minute i probably wouldn't say there's anything better so i would say just jump in it and just have a go do it alongside your job like, like you know you, you might everybody's got a few spare hours to pack or things like that or whatever yeah so it's not too late in 2024 for amazon then yeah. i mean <laughs> like i said i was just saying the other day like i started in like 
the end of 2022 and i'm like oh like even now like i'll be like oh like that seems like seems like so long ago but like when i was doing it in 2022 just stop people have been doing it for years like you know there's never a better time to start when if you start now you'll be ahead of somebody that's doing it in a year so exactly yeah people were saying it was too late and that was it in 2020 in 2012 sorry you know <laughs> and saying oh, i'm not gonna bother it's too yeah. late you've got to get that with, like, drop, guys and... seen that with like drop shipping and stuff like that <laughs> yeah because people are, like uh, saying oh, like drop shipping instead and things like that but yeah. amazon you can't because it's you can't help be amazon so you it's it's not dead and the only thing that maybe be dead is like certain like the only thing that can never be dead is like leads like some leads just get crushed like bricked and stuff and they might never recover but there's so yeah. much stock out there like you you, you you know like it can't be dead like you can start whenever you want you can find your own stuff do you know what i mean easily yeah unless Amazon so many dies different methods off, out there. which i don't see <laughs> you know there are yeah. so many methods out there everyone kind of gets bottled into one very uh narrow area i think of categories and uh, oh, ROIs, yeah. and it's just in and beauty. it's just <laughs> yeah toys and games health and beauty it's like how can everyone just do that one thing there's like i just say look around your house you know you door handles light fittings radiator valves i don't know like whatever um so many things you can sell the thing to do was um for private label go into aldi and little do you know the middle section sure yeah aldi and little look like they sell um they sell branded stuff but it's like brands you might not know of just look at the items and get give might give you ideas you think yeah, oh that looks good wouldn't it be good one day if I had my own item and then you can sell it in our Aldi or Little or Asda or whatever? Okay, it's interesting. Uh, so they're obviously uh, was... doing private label yeah. as well, but over their own store. You know, they probably get it from China, I assume, under their own brand or whatever. Is that what they're yeah, exactly. or Yeah. That's what I was I was looking at brands and thinking, yeah, that's definitely like somebody that's probably started out small, you know, but that, that could be a good idea for some people to do if you're thinking about private label or whatever. And you just, okay. just look and like get like certain ideas and things like that. It was just something that came in my head there when I was just thinking. Yeah, I was doing it the other day. Idea. I was doing it the other day. I was thinking, oh, was it? I think it was. I think I was in Aldi and I seen an item and I was like, "Yep, yeah, I'll probably look into that. Maybe not take that idea, but by just searching that idea, they'll probably open up five or six more." Okay. Yeah. So and, many items out there. So many items. It's and these supermarkets, they know about the sales and the seasons and stuff. So if there's something, oh, yeah. something, you know, that it's a hot item that time, you know. 100%. Um, so yeah, I've there's yet always to do that. Yeah, I've, I've yet to actually do a particular item for a particular season. For private yeah, that would pretty. That'd be pretty interesting. Bundles, and obviously, as well. That's a big yeah. thing, isn't it? So absolutely bundles. Yeah, there's like the hive. Uh, free like for them. Some, yeah, I might, I might try bundles this year and like Christmas time. See what we see how it works absolutely oh yeah maybe you're like buying something green for st patrick's day or something you've yeah, got a yeah. very narrow window but the rois and the profits could be enormous for yeah, that exactly and that's what i'm saying with sales cycles yeah. you probably got like you, you, q4 in itself is a sales cycle because there's that many items out there and just yeah. absolutely crazy but in terms of like throughout the year like there's that many sales cycles if you like you think like if you're thinking ahead you yeah you're, you're so ahead of the game yeah absolutely there's certain and, items yeah. that sell at certain times of the year absolutely i'd say yeah just go and look at the supermarket see what they're doing you know you'll see the mother's day the father's day the yeah. uh valentine's uh, right now they're stocking a lot of garden stuff as we're coming into summer yeah, you see then, it, then all that stuff will go on discount as summer comes to an end you can buy it all like yeah. grass seeds and stuff for a pound a box or whatever you know yeah. um being in the shops yeah so you know you'll see when <laughs> things get dis like when things get reduced and things like that absolutely so any uh sort of final words of wisdom or encouragement for our viewers on my uh if yeah so if, if you like if you haven't started yet I, I would probably just say like i would definitely just say start in terms of like maybe even just starting off slow but if you've already started selling things like that just i would just say just be consistent that's i, I can't it's quite basic like i know but like oh, that's the <laughs> way i do it like i'm just consistent every day cool build yeah. it up slowly yeah it takes a while unless you can yeah, suddenly get get all the amazing stock right off the bat you know it's very it's a slow build isn't it and it's a simple yeah, business model but it's also a complex business model one of those 100 uh, that's what i'm yeah. saying like you haven't started just i know it sounds that but you just start because like you can't you'll learn so much yeah don't over so many mistakes don't yeah plan it out just do it <laughs> yeah it's like that isn't it though you, 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 it, that's how you fall anyway though don't you you, you are you're literally just doing it instead of planning it yeah absolutely awesome like? well 
What is it like buy first and then think later or something like that? Yeah, that's why I say for the Amazon to Amazon leads, people are saying, oh, this leads popped up and I'm, uh, uh, I can't get them in time because I'm sat there analyzing it. And yeah, I'm I like, did it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. did it yesterday, the spring yeah. sale, I've got stuff coming in and I'm like, well, I can't even remember ordering that, but I'll have a look yeah. to see if it's any good. If not, you can return it. So yeah exactly especially with amazon you can buy yeah buy now think later basically or you know yeah. <laughs> or or it comes from the whole like shoot shoot first ask questions later <laughs> but um but yeah and you say you can return amazon to the most customer centric yeah. company out there so you can always return this stuff it's no oh, problem most no. no, so. stuff you get returned after like six months and you're like yeah i don't remember buy this yeah, you know what i mean but <laughs> absolutely yeah i get that as well I, I you know making a sale on something i think i don't remember buying that or even touching it or maybe going to the web yeah prep center but you know you just randomly held on well, to yeah. yeah go for it right yeah. in your right in your skews when you're listing items if, if people yeah. know what i mean when i'm if you're already selling amazon that's good that's what i didn't do for a while just what yeah, just I mean, when you think about the that yeah i was the same yeah yeah, so yeah, put the price you from an Amazon, put so. your retailer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't let Amazon put their like random skew in. So that's no. a lesson I learned as well. So, yeah. but oh, oh, awesome. Great. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. I hope the uh, viewers enjoyed all the tips and uh, tricks that you gave away and the advice and are inspired by your story. So, um, yeah, yeah no, you're, you're you should be on for sort Thanks of 10 grand months on. and uh, yeah, yeah, and beyond basically. So it'll be exciting to see you in a year's time. Awesome. That's the goal. Cool. Okay. Thanks for inviting Thanks us anyway. Much. Yeah, no problem. See you in a bit. Right. See ya.